it's really uh, uh, important to let people digest the, the guidelines first and then think about how to implement this in daily clinical practice. Exactly. So I, I think, think that's key, the that's implementation of the guideline recommendations. And that's certainly right. something. So there are going to be quite a few sessions on implementation, right? Yes. So one year after, uh, yes. we will have dedicated sessions to discuss this topic. Huh? And we have new guidelines? Yes, for new which, ones. Which uh, are those? So it's uh, ventricular uh, arrhythmias and sudden cardiac death. Uh, that's a major important uh, one. Then we have for the first time a guideline on cardiac oncology. Another one that touches upon everybody in medicine is uh, cardiac risk stratification for patients undergoing non-cardiac uh, uh, surgery. Yeah. The ESC guidelines, they are now truly a global standard. And there are so many examples where, where we do all the same thing, but practice uh, differs. For example, in China, there's a very oh, high yeah. prevalence of bicuspid aortic stenosis. Right. So their experience uh, in using TAVI for bicuspid valve is completely different from right. ours predominantly in, in, in uh, tricuspid. And there are so many other examples. And there may also be an interesting cross-sectional topic here with the, the, the non cardiac surgery preoperative yes, assessment yes, guidelines. Yes, absolutely. Because many times we get asked, you know, can this patient be have surgery? The answer is usually oncology. yes. Right? yes and the answer but, should be yes. yes. I think we do yes. much yeah. Yes, but we get much better in risk stratifying yeah. and we're getting much better in monitoring. Uh, right. and that has to do with new tests like the high sensitivity uh, troponin, yeah. which has a major prognostic uh, impact in patients undergoing non-cardiac surgery.